Hello my garden friends. This is Jersey Shore Lisa with MyNJGarden.com and I wanted to show you the side yard of my front yard food forest. Now if I pan over here, all the way on the other side of the yard, you can see what I usually do in my garden tours is walk through that part of the yard and show you all those plants and talk about them and what their benefits are and how they produce for me and, and how that's my food forest. But this is the side yard. And now that we are in the middle of July and things are getting a little wild, a little crazy, I thought I'd take a walk through here and show you what's growing. So let's start down here at the bottom. We have prickly pear cactus, and then we have some in the pot too. That's actually New Jersey's only native cactus. It is edible, but it does have spiky things on it that will hurt you if you try and touch them at all with your bare hands or weed around them. It's really tricky, so make sure that you are well protected when you are dealing with this plant. But it is evergreen. It does kind of wither a little bit in through the winter and kind of deflate. And then in the spring and summer, it perks right back up again and it does flower. Um, there are no flowers on this right now, but that is a bud that was open either earlier today or yesterday. They only bloom, each flower only blooms for one day. Um, and it is a favorite food for the native box turtle. Um, these are canna lilies. They are red leafed canna lilies. And I did not dig these up and store them inside over the winter, though in this zone, which is 7A at the Jersey Shore, um, it is advised to do that. And I did dig some up, but the ones that were planted there stayed there over the winter. I figured they would just uh, kind of rot and improve the soil with some nitrogen, um, but they came back and I'm happy with them because they look really happy and so tropical looking. I just love them. Um, they will get red flowers later in the season, uh, but right now they just have beautiful foliage. There's an aster there, some iris, there's a rhubarb hanging out there, and if I back up, you can see the native hibiscus that's just totally having a great time and getting humongous. Um, this hibiscus will bloom with gorgeous pink flowers about the size of my hand. Um, they aren't those big dinner plate hibiscus, but they are native. The pollinators love them. They love really moist areas. And I guess the wood chip mulch that's here is making them really happy. Um, this under here, I had thought that this was a goji berry. It dies back every year. It hadn't fruited yet. And now I'm thinking it might be a pomegranate, not a goji berry, because I had brought it over from my other house in a pot. And um, I did buy a goji berry this spring and put it in. And that's a goji berry. And I know that it is because it actually had a couple of goji berries on it when I bought it. So uh, that's a goji berry. <laughs> that looks like a pomegranate because I do know that I have a dwarf pomegranate planted a little further away and that's what that looks like. This one just has never flowered yet because it does die all the way back to the ground and it doesn't tend to leaf, leaf out until fairly late in spring. So I think I'm really pushing the zone. I wonder if it will flower this year. It looks really happy so maybe it will. This is astragalus. It's a nitrogen fixing shrub it does die all the way back in the winter but it comes back nicely it's in the legume family it is a medicinal herb and it flowers with yellow flowers later in the season there are more cana lilies back there that is not a red leaf um but those also came back all on their own i did not dig them up this is a fig and it is the fifth year in the ground and I haven't gotten any figs off of it yet, but you could see I'm putting the um, bedding from my rabbit's cage directly underneath it. I'm trying to give it some help, some fertilizer, and hopefully we'll get some figs at some point. I don't know, no figs on it yet though. Um, this is a new grape arbor I put up in the spring and planted at the base. I have a couple of grapevines. Um, Here's one, and then I also planted some long purple beans to go with them to kind of help 
get those grapes established with some nitrogen fixing companions uh, and I knew that the grapes probably wouldn't make it all the way over the arbor this season so I figured a couple of long pole beans would be really interesting going up there. There's a couple more cana lilies, some day lilies. This is mountain mint. It's a native shrub. Well, it's a native herb. Um, perennial, comes back every year and the pollinators love it, but it's not quite flowering yet. It's just about to. Uh, there are buds all over it. I'm not gonna wanna walk underneath this arbor once that flowers because already we can see the cat mint is flowering and there are just bees and wasps and all kinds of little buzzing things just all over it and they love it. So um, planted along with that cat mint, we see some sun chokes popping up uh, and some fennel and a, um, what is that? That's an aromatic aster. This over here is where I put my kids two Halloween pumpkins. This is my vining bed. I let vining things happen here. And I let their Halloween pumpkins just rot here. They had painted them with some acrylic paint and I let the pumpkins rot and they planted themselves quite happily. Uh, there's lots of flowers under there. I don't know if there are any pollinated pumpkins yet, but also we see lots of Malabar spinach, which is a vine and it thrives in the heat and that has reseeded itself. It reseeds itself every year and I just let it go because it's really delicious and it's a wonderful green that happens in the heat of summer. This is a potted fig and this does have a couple of baby figs on it there, if you can see. So I'm excited. These are the first figs I'll get from here. Um, this is a, a bed of annual vegetables and I have a soaker hose. I've never actually used a soaker hose before and I've put a soaker hose through this bed and I just turned it on and it is kind of sweating out and watering these plants. I have some tomatoes and peppers and um, some eggplant in there and I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's going really slowly and it's not, the soaker hose is not as plump and full as it could be, but that's because they're, it's attached to my rain barrels. And so it's just being gravity fed at this point. Um, and I just turned it on. We had a lot of rain yesterday, so we really didn't need the soaker hose today, but I wanted to try it out. Um, but my rain barrels are filled to the brim, so. <laughs> That, that is how the soaker hose is gonna get used for the rest of the season. This is mint that has been in this fire pit for two years and it's kind of struggling. It probably needs to be repotted. So I'll probably, before the season is through, I'll dump it out and fill that back up with soil and replant a couple of clumps of the mint in there. And it'll probably be a lot happier next year. There is a wine bottle upturned in there and there's a, um, a steak that's made of terracotta. So it lets the, the water from the wine barrel slowly infiltrate into the soil. This is a potted red twig dogwood. It is a native plant and they tend to get very large. They will get to be uh, an eight to 10 foot multi-stemmed shrub and it layers really easily. Um, I just put it in this pot because I don't want to devote the space that it will want to take up to it. So there's some butterfly weed and horseradish. This has been kind of dry. The strawberries are kind of dying back in this area. So um, we'll see how they do if they send out a lot of runners this year. There's a pepper back there. This is a medlar tree. A medlar tree will become a 15 foot tree that's in the rose family and the fruit is uh, kind of like big rose hips and you let them let you let them get really overripe kind of like a persimmon um, and once they are very overripe you can eat them and the inside is supposed to taste like spiced applesauce which sounds really cool and interesting and I've never had a medlar so 
I'm looking forward to that tree producing. It does not need a pollinator, it's self-pollinating. Uh, and then there's some anise hyssop. Uh, that is a native perennial and it's medicinal as well. And then there's also some more mountain mint back there. Over here is a yasta berry, which replaced a fig that didn't make it this year. Uh, and then some raspberries, heritage raspberries. So these are thornless raspberries. There's another fennel. And then over here, down here, you can see this plant that's trying to vine up here, but it really wants, it doesn't want to vine up this big, these big fence slats. It wants something more like chicken wire. So I'm gonna have to attach something that it will really like to vine up in front of this fence, uh, but that this is a ground nut. So a ground nut is native and it's um, a food crop that was important to indigenous people in New Jersey. It, ha it creates an edible tuber um, that can be used in lieu of potatoes. Also, it's in the legume family, so it is nitrogen fixing perennial. It comes back every year and it does create an edible bean that's approximately the size of lentils. So I'm looking forward to that. It did flower last year and it did have beautiful burgundy flowers, but I ended up accidentally cutting the plant at some point. So I didn't get to see the beans that follow the flowers. So this year I'm being really careful with it and I wanna see what those beans look like. Over here on this side, I have some potted plants that I'm trying to, I, I took um, some cuttings and some divisions from my other property and potted them up so that I could share them with friends. Um, but over here I have a squash in a pot and then there's some cana lilies there. Behind these potted plants is asparagus and it's, I think it's being attacked by some kind of bugs or beetles. Um, it, it is dying back quite a bit at the tops of the plants, of the ferns. Um, so I don't know if I should trim them back uh, or just leave them be and just wait it out and cut them down in the winter. I'm not really sure what I should do about them because they don't look that happy at this point in the season. Uh, this is pineapple sage. That flowers with beautiful red flowers that um, hummingbirds really love, but it flowers late. It flowers at the same time the asters do, so it's a late fall blooming shrub. And if you put it out in the garden away from, this is the south wall of my house. So this is a beautiful space for things that I really wanna push my zone with. Um, pineapple sage has died elsewhere in the garden, and hasn't come back as a perennial, but this comes back every year because it is against the sunny south wall. This is oregano and it's in flower right now. And boy, oh boy, but the pollinators love it. I don't even wanna to get too close because there's so many buzzing things <laughs> around those flowers, but they just adore oregano. And oregano spreads to form this wonderful, uh, approximately 18 inch ground cover and um it's really happy here uh and then behind that is the actual dwarf pomegranate that i have a dwarf in that it will get to be about 10 feet tall if it's really happy but uh, as i said it um it does leaf out fairly late i don't think it'll ever get that tall in this area but it did flower last year so um i'm looking forward to that and then there's some irises here. And then as we go through my gate to my side yard, my side yard's kind of a mess right now, guys, because I've potted up a lot of plants to share because I'm kind of, I've renovated the gardens at our, um, at our other property in order to sell that house. But so there's a lot of potted stuff around here. But in this bed, there's um, quite a few things that are perennial edibles. There's lovage and um, it's really flopping over like crazy because it has flowered and it's setting seed and I'm totally gonna save the seed from this, uh, but it does come back every year and it kind of is a very strong celery flavor and you can use it as an herb. You can use it as a vegetable, but like I said, it does have a very strong flavor. So um, you can add it to soups and things like that. It's very delicious, but 
when used sparingly. <laughs> There's also fennel here, which is a perennial and we'll come back every year. That has also flowered and is going to seed. And there is salad burnet, which is kind of like parsley. And that's a, that's a perennial as well. And um, that's setting seed. And then this is American spikenard. And American spikenard is an understory shrub. It does die all the way back to the ground. And all of this growth happens in one season. It flowers and then small berries form. It is edible, it is medicinal. It's not delicious, so I've heard. I haven't tasted it myself, but it is important to wildlife and it does come back every year and it is native. Um, you can see that I'm collecting some windows uh, and a door over here. And that's exciting because I'm going to build an old window greenhouse. And so I'm keeping my eye on places like Marketplace and Craigslist so that I can gather what I would need to, um, to build this DIY greenhouse and it's gonna be fantastic and I'm very excited about it and I'm very motivated to get started, but I need more windows, obviously. I want it to be uh, probably an eight by 10 greenhouse, eight by 12. Um, right now my greenhouse, I'll show you quickly from across the yard. Can we see it? No, not yet. Here we go. Can you see it over there? <laughs> That's my greenhouse now. And there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not complaining, it's fine except <laughs> I don't really love having to unzip and zip um, and it's not great with insulation so I can't really start my season too much earlier um, in inside that greenhouse but if I use actual windows to build a greenhouse and I cock them up and and I might even be able to run some electric and it'll have a little bit better insulation who knows I could really do a lot with something like that so I'm gonna try um, this back here is a gooseberry that I transplanted from my other property and it looks really unhappy and I'm hoping it bounces back. Uh, here's some spiderwort, Virginia spiderwort. That's a native and that I just put in this year so it looks very straggly, but it is completely edible. The stems, the leaves, the blooms, the roots, completely edible and it will come back every year and supposedly spreads vigorously. So why not? have that in the garden. Um, there are May apples down there and they are doing well. This is an American hazelnut. And then I have a little one right here. And I put these guys very close together though they get to be very large. Well, very large, um, 15 foot possibly, multi-stemmed shrubby tree. Um, so it is gonna take up quite a bit of space in this side yard, but they're wind pollinated so like corn so they kind of have to be in close proximity so that they actually pollinate each other so i put them right up next to each other in this bed there's also some ostrich plume ferns that are that came up for the first time this year which i put in at the end of last year and they will form clumps and they have edible fiddleheads in the early spring so that's fun and then there's also ramps in this bed which are native and they are wild leeks and they are found in forested shaded areas and they are one of the first greens to come up in spring so they are ephemerals so they are gone by now they come up in spring and then they die back quickly as uh before it gets too hot and they have already they're gone so um they'll come back next spring and that is a bleeding heart and they are an early spring kind of thing. So they're, that's kind of dying back now. This is my cold frame. And in my cold frame, I have some cuttings that I popped in there as well as a couple of seeded, uh, those are beach plums seedlings. And then there are a couple of um, cuttings that I rooted that are aronia berry, black aronia berry. And then there's uh, a persimmon that came up from seed that I actually planted two years ago. Uh, most of them came up last year and I moved them around, but that guy waited and he came up this year. And then there's an elderberry there and some butterfly weed and a lot of potted things and tools and pots, stuff like that. I'm showing you my junk. Um, and then 
these are tomatoes that I just needed a spot for and there's a perfectly good fence and I didn't have to put stakes in so I put the tomatoes in there and I'm tying them up to the fence as they grow so this is my side yard everybody I hope I'm not making you seasick and uh, these are my rain barrels did I talk about the rain barrels this is also my compost system so my roof here has a gutter attached to the back of it that is attached to the rain barrel and they are daisy chained together um this is the more finished com compost though there's some cana lilies that are coming up in the middle of it <laughs> and then this is the new pile that i'm constructing i'm using that in the gardens and i'm constructing this new pile i just did a bunch of weeding out of that bed that i put the the soaker hose in and I threw them on top of the compost. I need to mix it all together. Uh, so, so those are the rain barrels and that's what we have this July 2020 in the side yard of myNJgarden.com. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will gladly reply. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and let me know how I'm doing. <laughs> I will join you all again soon with another update from myNJgarden.com. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.